from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. Good evening, this is the National News Broadcast coming to you live from the Rupuani Studios. Bringing you your stories for today is Charitha Minipur Arachi and I'm Sharam Maskreen. First, here are the top stories. Parliamentarian Ajit Rajapaksa appoints to Deputy Speaker post. The resolution tabled by the opposition to suspend standing orders and debate the motion of displeasure against the President defeated. Instructions for senior DIG to CID to act as per the directives of the Attorney General over the attacks on protesters in front of Temple Trees and Golf Ace Green. Parliamentarian Samat Nishanta arrested. CID records a statement from Deshabandhu Thennakorn. 80,000 domestic gas cylinders to be issued daily for the market. A petrol tanker to arrive in the country tomorrow. United National Party says all the parties except for National People's Power support the Prime Minister. 3,500 buildings in northern Ukraine sustain damages from Russian attacks. On to those and other stories in detail now and starting off with the top local story. Sri Lanka Podhujana Parabona parliamentarian Ajit Rajapaksha was elected as a Dev Deputy Speaker of the Parliament today. 109 votes were casted in favour of the MP while only 78 votes were against. MP Rohini Kamiratna from the Samadhi Janabalavegya competed for the relevant post. Meanwhile, the Speaker expressed his condolences at the beginning of the parliamentary session over the demise of the late MP Amarakirti Atapurala. Speaker Mahindaya Pabevartana informed the Parliament over the demise of Fulanarwa District Parliamentarian Amrakirti Atakorala. He then expressed the condolences of the Parliament to the family members of the late Parliamentarian. Opposition leader proposed MP Rohini Kaviratna for the Deputy Speaker position, which was seconded by MP Lakshman Kiriella. MP Ajit Rajapaksa's name was nominated by Professor G. L. Piris and was seconded by a parliamentarian of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna. Parliamentarian Vimal Viravans pointed out that the expenditure related to the vote is at 9 million rupees. He indicated that a solution over this issue should be resolved through dialogue without incurring such losses. MP Nalin Bandar said that the present Prime Minister clearly stated few days ago that a female representative should be appointed for this position. MP Vimal Veeravansa said that if the vote is being conducted despite the objections, then the parliamentarians of 10-party collision will not take part in this vote. Newly appointed Deputy Speaker Ajit Rajapaksa apologized from the general public for committing the valuable time of the parliament over this procedure. He said that an opinion has erupted within certain social segments over the murder of all 225 MPs, which was exemplified through the recent unfortunate incident. He said that he wished to see the late MP Amarakir Tiyatakorala as the Deputy Speaker. He added that he perceives that this incident as a terrorist act. 
He further added that the majority of the ruling party parliamentarians are unable to attend the parliament at present. He said that the entire society has become distraught. Therefore, he added that all 225 MPs should stand together to fulfill the duties towards the public. MP Rohan Kaviratna said that the parliamentary members showed the world today that the women have no right to be appointed to the top seat of the parliament in a country where the first female prime minister in the world and an executive female president were elected. She said that the prime minister's first request over the parliament was that this position should be given to a woman. However, she pointed out that the prime minister has become a puppet of the Rajapaksas. She also said that this government is not controlled by the president or the prime minister. Prime Minister Ronald Vikramasinghe said that he wished to see a female representative in this position. However, it remains a hope. He said that the parliament has been threatened and the parliamentary members have sustained damages and one MP lost his life. He said that an inquiry should be conducted over the damages despite any party differences. He said that this country should be uplifted at this difficult juncture and the culture within the parliament should also be changed. Therefore, he proposed the formation of a national council to discuss and debate over the issues pertaining to the country with the support of all members of the parliament. The resolution tabled by the opposition the resolution tabled by the opposition to suspend standing orders and debate the motion of displeasure against the president was defeated by 51 votes today. 119 votes were against the motion, while 68 votes were in favour. Samaki Janabalavege recently handed over the two non-confidence motions against the president and the government to the speaker. Even though the no-confidence motion against the government was not taken up for debate following the appointment of the new prime minister, the opposition insisted that the motion of displeasure against the president should be taken up for debate. The opposition had recently suggested at the party leaders' meeting to take the motion up for debate after suspending the handing standing orders. Accordingly, the parliamentarian M.A. Sobandaran proposed the motion in parliament today and it was second by Chief Opposition Vip Lakshman Kiriala. However, the Leader of the House, Minister Dinesh Gunavadana, requested for a vote over the suspension of standing orders. The Speaker accepted the request and directed to conduct a vote in this regard. The 21st and 22nd Amendments to the Constitution were tabled in Parliament today. Parliamentarian Ranjit Madhuma Bandara presented the 21st Amendment to the Parliament while the 22nd Amendment was tabled as a private MP motion by Parliamentarian Vijayadasa Rajapaksa. Meanwhile, a debate was held in Parliament today over the recent chain of incidents where houses of parliamentarians and other public representatives on May 9. MP D. Virasinghe said that those who are responsible for the attack on his residence were the members of the JVP. He said that these suspects were already being arrested by the police. He said that his entire life earnings and assets were burnt before his eyes by the JVP. Minister Kanchan and Vijay Sekar said that their stance will not waver by the attempts made to inflict fear on them by vandalizing and destroying their houses and other assets to use that fear to manipulate the vote and force President Gotabe Rajapaksa to vacate the post. He said that public properties have been destroyed from these violence acts which were brought or erected at the expense of taxpayer money.
MP Vimal Veeravansa said that acts of arson is not the solution for the prevailing crisis. He said that 12 persons had arrived initially to his residence. He further said that the police officers on duty at the residence had been informed not to take any measures against them. Accordingly, he added that the crowd had gradually increased and then vandalized his residence. He said that there is a conspiracy behind this chain of events. And meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police has instructed DIG in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department to act in accordance with the instructions directed by the Attorney General over the attacks on the demonstrations that took place in front of the Temple Trees and Presidential Secretariat. The relevant instructions were directed on the May 9th. Accordingly, directing a list of already identified suspects in the investigations related to the violent incidents, instructions had been proven to conduct for the investigations. Police Media Division has indicated that the Inspector General of Police has instructed the DIG in charge of the Criminal Investigation Department to hand over the progress of the further investigations to the Attorney General. Instructions have also been given to sort for relevant legal actions under the provisions of the Code of Criminal Procedure Act. A group of officers attached to the Criminal Investigation Department has arrested two suspects yesterday for allegedly assaulting on a group of protesters near the temple trees and damaging public property while being a member of unlawful gatherings on last night. The suspects have been arrested from Pinwatta Pandura and Golamudama Ratmalana areas. They were produced before the Colombo Ford Magistrates Court. Accordingly, Magistrate Tilani Gamage ordered the suspects to be remanded until tomorrow. Nine suspects were arrested for allegedly vandalizing the residence of a press belonging to chairman of Parandura Pradesh Sabha, Hemant Fernando, were produced before the Parandura magistrate today. The suspects were taken into custody during an investigation conducted jointly by the Anti-Corruption Bureau of Parandura Division and Pinwatta Police. The Parandura Acting Magistrate Lahiru N. Silva ordered the suspects to be remanded until the 24th. Ten suspects were surrendered to the Navalapitiya police for allegedly vandalizing the Mahindananda Aludgamage Foundation office in Navalapitiya were produced before the Navalapitiya magistrate. The magistrate Nilanta Vimalavira ordered to release the suspects on personal sureties worth 100,000 rupees each and reconvened the case on the 27th. The private secretary of the former minister Mahindananda Aludgamage had filed a complaint with the police over the incident along with a list of names for the suspects. Four other suspects who were arrested previously for the same incident were granted bail after producing before courts. Two suspects have been taken into custody for allegedly setting fire on the residence of K. Golpaya G. K. Samarasinghe in Kopiwatta, Ranvela on the 9th. The arrested were made by K. Gol Police Division Crimes Investigation Bureau. Two suspects related to the alleged murder of parliamentarian Amar Kirti Atukorala and his security officer during the unrest occurred in Nitambu town on last 9th have been taken into custody. The arrests were made by the officers attached to the Homicide and Organised Crime Division of the Criminal Investigations Department. The suspects were arrested in Nitambu, Nabardua and Junaid Road area. The Criminal Investigation Department recorded a statement from senior DIG in charge of Western Province Deshabandhu Tennakorn over the violent attacks took place at the Gold Phrase Green on last 9th. Avisa Vela Magistrate ordered today to remand four suspects arrested for allegedly assaulting a councillor of Ahaliyagoda Pradesh Sabha and his son on last 10th damaging their residence and motor vehicle on the last 31st of May. Meanwhile, 18 suspects allegedly to have vandalised and set fire on residences of former minister and parliamentarians were produced before the Samaharama courts. Subsequently, they were remanded until tomorrow. Two Sri Lanka Podujana Perumana parliamentarians have been taken into custody by the Criminal Investigation Department over the violent and disruptive incidents occurred in Gold Face Green and Kolpiti areas. Accordingly, parliamentarians Sanat Nishanta and Milan Jayatilaka have been taken into custody. The investigations relevant to the incidents are being conducted under the instructions of the Attorney General. Ceylon Petroleum Corporation says the distribution of petrol is being carried out under strict limitations. General Manager Marketing of the Corporation, Krishanta Vikramasinghe, said that a vessel consists of petrol expected to arrive in the country tomorrow and the prevailing situation will be eased in the next three days. 
General Manager Marketing of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Krishanta Vikram Singh, said that the CPC poses as adequate quantities of diesel stocks required for the next couple of days. However, he pointed out that the petrol quantities are limited levels and expected to run out within the next two or three days. Meanwhile, remarks were shared over the quality of the fuel during the media briefing held today. Laboratory managers of Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Nalin Chandrasuri, said that the four tests are conducted on each product before releasing it to the customers. Therefore, he said that only the quality of fuel are being released to the market. General Manager Marketing of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Shishanta Vikramasinghe, said the consumers can directly reach out to the CPC via 011-5455-130 or 011-5234-234 over such issues. However, long queues were seen today near filling stations across the country. People have said that they have not been able to acquire fuel for many days. Reports have indicated that school transport services are also experienced with a severe fuel crisis. Litro Gas Company has indicated that 80,000 gas cylinders will be issued on a daily basis from tomorrow. Its chairman Vijita Herat said that a total of 6.5 million US dollars should be paid for both the gas tankers. Reports have indicated that the country is facing a severe gas shortage. Long queues of consumers can be seen in many parts of the country to acquire domestic gas cylinders. Meanwhile, Ceylon, Petrol, Ceylon Electricity Board rather has informed that the power interruption period will be ruined to return to 3 hours and 40 minutes from today onwards. In other stories, the Colombo Stock Exchange showed a clear growth for the second consecutive day. The selling rate of a US dollar was 365 rupee mark as well. The Colombo Stock Exchange began its trading today following the weekend and Vesak holidays. At the close of the market trading today, the All Share Price Index indicated a growth of 359.24 units, which is a 4.4% growth. The value of All Share Price Index was indicated at 8,457.65 units. Daily turnover was indicated at 2.75 billion rupees. Meanwhile, top-level commercial banks indicated the selling rate of a US dollar at 365 rupee mark. The buying rate was at 355 rupee mark. The exchange rate on last Wednesday was at 380 rupees. Commissioner General of Examinations LM D. Dharmasena says that the GC Ordinary Level Examination will be held on the 23rd of May. Meanwhile, Salon Teachers Services Association said that no hindrances will be made over the conducting of the GCE Ordinary Level Examination on this scheduled date. General Secretary of the Ceylon Teachers Services Association, Mahinda Jai Singh, has said that they will not cause any hindrances for the GCE Ordinary Level Examination. He said that this examination will be conducted amidst various obstructions and students are prepared to sit for the examination. He also said that teachers will fulfill the examination duties to the best possible levels. However, he pointed out that the government is yet to pay the allowances for any advanced level examination duties, scholarship examination duties and paper marking for the advanced level examination. He said that a discussion will be reached for Loving discussions with the other trade unions over the paper marking for audited level examinations. Commissioner General of Examinations LMT Dharmasena said that the admissions of the school and private applicants have already been forwarded to the relevant schools and addresses of the private applicants. He further said that if an applicant find, a, find an issue pertaining to the admissions or the relevant subjects and mediums, those applicants can approach their relevant schools, principals and also can log into the examinations website. He pointed out that the relevant payments on the scholarship examinations have already been finalized and expected to finalize the payments related to the advanced level examinations in the near future. He further added that the relevant payments will be made within the next week. Today is the 39th day of the people's protest being held in front of the presidential secretariat of the Gulf Race Green. Now, large crowds were seen today as well. 
Various religious programs were conducted at the protestite, marking the Wesak Full Moon Poi Day. Catholic priests were also part of these programs as well. May Dukpat come here, Hagila Jivat and Berunama, Ansa to the Gunna Sid Devenogota, Eta Bada Feminine and Gota, Evalakwaganim Sandaha, Aud Atagana Sid Deveno, Samaji Varada Kaud Atagataham. In other stories, wetland journalist Victor Ivan says structural reforms are required for the entire nation in order to overcome the prevailing crisis. And he made these remarks during a video briefing held in Colombo today. Veteran journalist Victor Ivan said that major splits can be observed in both the government and the opposition. He added that the nation requires structural reforms to uplift the country and eradicate these splits. He further added that the both government as well as the opposition should sponsor the efforts along with the youth and the public. The Samagi Janabalavegia alleges that the government avoided the opportunity to form an all-party government. These remarks were shared during a media briefing held today in Colombo. General Secretary of the Samagi Janabalavege, Ranjit Madhumabandar, said that the government had the opportunity to extend their hand in forming an all-party government. However, he added that the government managed to further split the existing difference. He said that the government should have allowed the opposition proposed candidate to take up the deputy speaker post. He added that the party will always extend their support for all efforts taken to uplift the collapsed public life. United National Party says all parties have extended their support for the Prime Minister except for the National People's Power. The party General Secretary Palitarangi Bandara made these remarks during a media briefing held in Colombo today. UNP General Secretary Palitarangi Bandara said that the opposition should form the government at the failure of the ruling party. Accordingly, he said that the opposition should take the opportunity and the responsibility and form the government. However, he said that the government has failed in this task. He said that the opposition leader failed to take over the prem premiership despite calling from various entities including former President Maitri Pala Sirisena and current President Gotabe Rajapaksha. He said that the present Prime Minister invited all political parties to support the rebuilding efforts of the country. He said that the country should have a political stability to attract foreign investors. And meanwhile, the Criminal Investigation Department seeks the public assistance in identifying suspects in connection to the violent incidents occurred in the Berihana Police Division. Several telephone numbers have also been introduced to provide information over the alleged suspects. Criminal Investigation Department has initiated investigations to arrest alleged suspects for committing arson and damage in public assets including a bus while behaving in a violent and disruptive manner during a demonstration held in Pangrivat area in Mirihana Police Division on March 31st. The police have sought for the assistance of the public to identify the arrest the relevant suspects. Accordingly, the Criminal Investigation Department has requested the public to provide information over the suspects to the relevant telephone numbers or on WhatsApp. Accordingly, the information can be provided to the OIC Public Complaints Division on 071-8594-922, Public Complaints Division 011-244-1379 or Operations Centre 011-242-2176. And meanwhile, the Med Department says that a southwest monsoon condition is gradually establishing over the island. Showers or thunder showers will occur at times in western Sabragabur Central, northwestern provinces, and Gol and Market districts due to the effects of the monsoon condition. 
Strong winds about can be expected at times over the western slope of the central hills in northern, north central and northwestern provinces and in Hambantota and Trinkabali districts. There is also a possibility of soul waves about 2 to 12.5 meters in the sea areas from Kankasanthare to Potavil via Putlam, Gol and Hambantota. Therefore, the bed department is advised not to venture in fishing and naval activities in these sea areas within the next 24 hours. Roads, low-lying areas and houses in many areas in Agarwanthata, Thepuvar, Galpath, Yatavara and Bulat Singhala have been inundated due to the rising of water levels in Kaluganga. Reports have indicated that the vehicular traffic along Horana Matugama main road in Agarwanthata area has been disrupted by a minor flood situation. Stay tuned for international news at the other side of this break. <laughs> Welcome back and now it's your foreign update upgrade from Ukraine. The Russian troops have shelled a military facility in Yorev district in western Ukraine's Lviv region, not far from the border with Poland. Head of the Lviv Regional Administration said that the region's air defense was activated during the attack. The mayor of Lviv also called on citizens to be aware of air raid sirens and to protect themselves. Meanwhile, Ukrainian authorities said a rescue mission to extract the last defenders on the Azovstal steel workers in Mariupol was underway after hundreds of soldiers were evacuated in an earlier operation. More than 260 fighters were evacuated through humanitarian corridors to areas under Russian and Moscow-backed separatist control with the Ukrainian's defense ministry saying a further exchange procedure would take place later. And meanwhile, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has lambashed the health officials and ordered the army to help distribute medicine as a wave of COVID cases sweeps through the country. More than a billion people have now been signaled by what Pyongyang is called fever, state media said. Some 50 people have died, but it's unclear how many of those suspected cases tested positive for COVID. North Korea has only limited testing capacity, so few cases are confirmed. North Korean are likely to be especially vulnerable to the virus due to the lack of vaccination and a poor health care system. A nationwide lockdown in place of the reclusive country in the state media said that Mr. Kim played an emergency plausible beating at the weekend where he accused officials of bungling the distribution of the national medicine reserves. Kim Jong in order that the powerful forces of the Army Medical Corps steps to immediately stabilize the supply of medicines in Pyongyang City. On to your sports news now and stories at home playing cricket. Today is the third day of the first test match between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Uh, playing their first innings, Bangladesh has scored 318 runs for the loss of three wickets and the match was played at Chittagong. Sri Lanka was able to put up a score of 397 runs for their first innings at the beginning of the third day. Bangladesh was at 76 without a loss. Sri Lanka was able to pick up three wickets during the day. Kasun Raj the picked up two wickets while Asita Fernando has taken one wicket. Tami Mikbal scored 133 runs for Bangladesh and tomorrow is the fourth day of the match. And Delhi Capitals won the match played uh, for the Indian Premier League, played against Punjab Kings yesterday by 17 runs. The match was played in Mumbai. Batting first, Delhi Capitals scored 159 runs for the loss of seven wickets in the.
That's a look at Rupaani News for tonight. It's a real pleasure having you with us today. Join us tomorrow at 8:50. Until then, from Charitha, I'm Sharon wishing you a very pleasant evening.